So as I was going through, you know, some of the main mistakes that I made as a beginner Amazon seller, and then from my students, all the mistakes that I see them make, I came up with a list of top 10 mistakes that I see beginner sellers make, and also the mistakes that I made when I first started. Um, now, one of the very first one that many people don't do, and it's just so simple and it's so overlooked, is do not use the supply chain. Amazon FBA, if you're not going to do Amazon FBA, just don't even do it and save your time and effort to do something else. Because Amazon has literally created the largest, most effective, and most successful fulfillment um, program in the world. And if you don't use it, like, it's insane. I, I just don't know why you would not do that. They're going to store for you. They're going to fulfill the orders for you. And they're going to do your customer service. I don't know what else you want. They're only going to charge you 15, 20% of sales. The second thing is don't kiss. Kiss stands for keep it simple, stupid. And you're going to see me talk about this. Wow, I can't even spell stupid. There you go. Uh, you're going to see me talk about this over and over and over again. Okay. And what I mean by that is they try to do too many things at the same time. They try to add complexity. They try to, you know, do arbitrage and drop shipping and private label and also add a Shopify store and try to sell on Walmart and try to do Etsy and all this stuff. Focus on one thing. So don't kiss plus focus. Again, you're going to see me, you know, you're going to see me talk about focus and kiss everywhere and all the time. These are literally the two things that have helped me scale and blow up my business from seven, eight figures from five to six, six to seven, seven, eight inside of this year. So this is the thing that you really have to think about very, very, very deeply. And you really have to just keep things simple. I mean, that's, that's super, super simple, but a lot of times people don't do it. The third thing is not knowing how to budget correctly. Now, this is probably one of the most important ones and people get overly excited. And I want to spend a little bit of time here and in number four, and I'll kind of break down to you exactly what that is. But look, if this is your first time to the channel, please do me a favor, subscribe to the channel. Also smash that uh, uh, like button because it helps the algorithm and it gets this video to show to other people. So not knowing how to budget correctly. Um, this is something very important. You, you know, have you heard the saying, you cannot build a seven-figure business with a nine-to-five uh, mindset. Well, it's the same thing. You cannot build a, you know, a twenty thousand dollar business with five hundred dollars. It's just not possible. So what you want to do is you want to figure out what your budget is, and most importantly, what your product budget is. And what that is is total budget minus. In our case, the way we teach our students, minus $500. And what that is, is, um, you know, well, let me explain. I might kind of be confusing you right now. So what this is, is product, product budget is, I want to know how much money do I have that I can spend on a product, right? So if I've got a total of, so example, um, example, if you've got $2,000, right? Let's just say 5,000 because 5,000 is more reasonable than 2,000. So you want to do minus 500 equals $4,500. So now 4,500 is really how much you can spend on a product to purchase product. The reason why we're taking this 500, this should cover you for tools. Like if you want to get Helium 10, this should cover you for any, um, uh, 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 like listing, creating your logo, package design, all that stuff. You want to make sure they have enough money for all this, right? So you want to take that $500, you want to leave it aside. And then $4,500 is how much you're going to buy the product or how much you're, you can spend for the product up to 4,500. Now this ties up very well to number four, okay? Because many beginner sellers don't know how to figure out their purchase power. But now that you figured out what your purchase power is, now what you want to do is you want to figure out, okay, how many units can I buy and how much of a product can I sell? Meaning, or how much, how much is the product that I want to sell or that I can sell, I actually can buy, right? And what I mean by this is 
So if you found a product, for instance, that you want to say it's a it's a it's a it's a fifty dollar product, right? Rule of thumb, rule of thumb, rule of thumb, thumb like this or thumb like that. I think it's thumb. I don't know. Anyways, rule of thumb: twenty five percent of sell price should be your um, your DDP cost. The DB cost equals manufacturing plus shipping to Amazon. Okay, so your DDP cost is how much you're, it's going to cost you to manufacture and to ship to Amazon each unit per unit, right? So per unit. Okay, so then what do you want to do is you want to take this and then you want to say, okay, so here's what I'm going to do is I'm going to, so for instance, um, in this example, um, and then it depends on how many units you want to buy. You want to buy at minimum. Um, I mean, you can get away with 200 units. Let's just say 200. So let's say 250 units. At minimum, 250 units. Um, max, um, I want to say 1,000. Really 500. I want to say 500 for first launch, right? So for the first launch. So in this case, so your, um, your maximum, maximum, uh, uh, maximum um, price per unit that you can pay, right? So maximum would be uh, equals 4,500, right? Uh, divided by, um, so that for the maximum, it's gonna be 4,500 divided by 250, right? So equals, what is that, 4,500. So 4,500 divided by 250. So that's gonna be $18. And then your minimum price per unit equals 4,500 divided by 500 equals 4,500 divided by 500 equals $9, right? So that means, you can, you can, the product that you should be looking for should at least cost you nine bucks, but then it should not cost you more than $18, right? So this means uh, potential sell price equals um, 18 times four, 18 times four, 72. And by the way, if I'm confusing you, please stay with me. I will explain. I'll explain myself. Potential sell price equals, um, what is this, nine times four, $36, $36, okay? So what I'm, so what this is, is when you're, the re, okay, so let, let's just get one thing straight. The way that I got this is I simply took this and multiplied it by four, why? Because on average, it should cost you, your. this is your DDP cost, right? So this is DDP, right? This is DDP. So it should cost you to purchase a product, so a DDP, DDP per unit, right? So DDP, and I don't know if you guys could hear the thunderstorm in the back, it's like crazy. Um, so this is how much it costs you per unit DDP, right? Because again, the reason why I was doing multiply, the reason, the, the, the way I got this was I took this and multiplied it by four because your DDP should be 25% of your sell price. Cool? So this is your sell price divided by four, it's 18. This is your sell price divided by four, 18. Or obviously if you wanna get here, you go, Nine times four, 36, 18 times four, 72. That means the product that you can sell could go for as high as $72 or as low as $36, right? I mean, obviously you can go lower like $20, $25, but you know, you don't have to. So now knowing these numbers, when you go to research a product, you want to make sure that this, this is the parameter that you're looking for. I see a lot of times people searching for 18 to 35 or 20 to 50 because some guru online said so, but that doesn't match with your um, that doesn't match with your with your budget, right? Because your budget, you know, maybe it's less than this, or maybe it's more. Why should you settle for this? You can go for more. The more, just to understand, the more you invest equals the more you make, 
right? So the more money you invest, the more money you'll make. So if you've got $10,000, why settle for this? You can sell a higher priced item or you can order more for the launch, you know, order 500, order a thousand, right? I don't think you should do it for the first launch, but you could definitely do that if you'd like to, okay? Again, guys, if you're finding value so, so far, drop in the comments, let us know. And then also, whoa, do you hear that? Drop in the comments, let us know. Also be sure to subscribe to the channel and smash that thumbs up. So let's keep moving here. Um, the number five thing is don't get into lowest barrier to entry products. And this, I see this a common mistake, people trying to, you know, look around their homes for product ideas, uh, looking around their home to, you know, get things, uh, 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 get things done or, or whatever it is. And they look at a product and say, you know what, I am a, a purchaser of this product. I'll probably, you know, it'll probably sell very well. It'll probably do very good on Amazon. And that's 100% true. It'll probably do very good on Amazon, but it's also very competitive. As a brand new seller on Amazon, you should look, look for the most vanilla product. The most vanilla product, the easiest entry, lowest uh, competition, and also, uh, it's easier to differentiate. And this is where I go into here. Not Don't know how to differentiate or add value. Differentiation and adding value is literally, uh, uh, um, a, it's literally a, a video, or I'm sorry, it's, it's literally an entire step that we spend hours and hours and hours on teaching our students how to do. Because knowing exactly how to differentiate and how to stand out, whether if that's by bundling, whether if that's by you know, brand registry, whether if that's by, you know, looking at the bad reviews. Here, let's add some things here. So looking at, uh, looking, oh, hello. Looking at bad reviews, bundling, um, uh, brand registry, et cetera. This is just some stuff, right? So this is just three things. I mean, we have dozens and dozens and dozens of ways that you can uh, differentiate, but Adding value to the customer, being different, one of the most important things, if not the most important things. And by the way, guys, if you want to work with our team directly, uh, in the description, you're going to see a link that takes you to a short workshop that breaks down to you how we do what we do. At the end, you can apply to get on a uh, free one-on-one -on -one strategy session with one of our enrollment advisors to learn a little bit more about our university and how you can work with us directly. So be sure to check out that link below if you'd like to do that. Um, number seven is get into, whoa, get into seasonal products. It's already, can you guys hear this? I'm like freaking out here. Uh, it's already difficult as is to find a product, let alone find a product that's only going to be hot for two, three months of the year. You want products that are only going to snowball over time, that are only going to get you know, further and further and further in demand and that you can build your business off of, you can build a brand. Starting with seasonal products, not a good idea. Number eight is launching too many products too quickly. I've seen this more often than not. Someone has $3,000 or $4,000. They go launch product number one. It costs them two. They have another two. They go launch product number two or product number three or start ordering or whatever. And then product number one runs out. And then now, and then this, you know, this kind of takes me into this product number one runs out. And then now they have to relaunch the product and spend all this money on giveaways and on PPC and all this stuff. And especially when you're first starting out, you want to launch one product, you want to stick to it. I don't care if you're in BJK University or anywhere you are, you're going to probably make mistakes. You're going to make a lot less mistakes with us, but you're still going to make some mistakes. So give yourself some time. This is a marathon, not a sprint. I say this all the time. This is a marathon, not a sprint, okay? So give yourself some time, man. Don't rush it. Launch one product, learn from it, you know, learn how you're going to do, you know, what you did, what you did wrong there, and then put it in the, the second product, you know, all of your stuff that you, that you learned and make sure that you do not run out of inventory. One thing you got to understand is Amazon ranks you to the top of the pages during the first couple of weeks simply because they want new sellers to make it, right? And that, that, like, that push in the beginning really helps you out a lot. And you would lose all the momentum if you run out of inventory because you're going to drop all the way in the back of the searches. And then now you have to re-rank, but without the honeymoon period, 
And trust me, it is not a situation that you want to be in. But again, guys, if this is your first time here and you're loving this content so far, drop in the comments. Let me know really what more you want to see from this channel. But most importantly, subscribe and smash that thumbs up button. And last but not least is list and not launch. You want to do is you want to launch your product. When you first launch a product on Amazon, um, when listing, when new listing, when new listing becomes active, Amazon throws you, that's not how you spell it, throws you all the way. Amazon throws you all the way in the back of the searches, man. And you need to launch your product. You need to launch to launch your product to make it to the top of the pages, right? You need to launch your product because 80% of all sales occur among top, um, I wanna say 10 sellers on page one. I mean, just ask yourself, when was the last time you ever went to, you know, Google or YouTube or Amazon or Walmart or whatever, and then you went to page five or six or 10 or 15 or 20, never. I usually make my decision, you know, uh, uh, just looking at the top few, um, few, uh, what's it called? Few options that I get, regardless what it is that I'm doing, whether if I'm shopping or I'm looking for a YouTube video or whatever it is. So you want to make sure that when you list a brand new product, it's not just, oh, I'm a listed and then I hope that it's going to work and that I'm going to generate sales. You need to actually launch it. You need to have a solid launch strategy. So those are just some of the top uh, things that I've seen Am beginner Amazon sellers make top mistakes. If you love this content and you want to learn more uh, and work directly with our team, Click the link in the, in the description, fill out that survey, and let's chat and see how we can help you. See you in the next video. Cheers.